when it comes to exam, as far as any exam is concerned, an intelligent person or an intelligent student is one whose questions were asked during the exam, not the one who read books from cover to cover. The primary goal of writing an exam is to pass your exam. So what he meant was that when it comes to a definition of a smart student, a smart student is one who devises strategies to pass his exam, not the one who learns everything. And then like we said earlier on, the manned OSCE stations have at least or two examiners physically present in the room you are being examined in. Now, we write the manned OSCE station a day after the unmanned OSCE stations have been written. Here, the candidates are divided into two groups, group A and then group B. Now, if the unmanned OSCE station was written say on Monday, then group A would write their, um, their man or station on Tuesday, while group B would write their man or station on Wednesday. Now here, the mass or station is actually um, for the various sub-disciplines, internal medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, community health, and then surgery. And so for the clinical sub-disciplines, okay, for the clinical sub-disciplines, for medicine, um, surgery, um, pediatrics and then obstetrics and gynecology, you have a history taking station. So, in the history taking station, you have two examiners physically present there. You are required to take a focused history from a simulated patient. A simulated patient is not a real patient, he is someone who has been trained to give specific uh, answers to questions that you would ask that patient or that simulated patient. And so, you have seven minutes seven minutes to take a focus history and then three minutes to answer questions on that history you've taken and so for internal medicine you may be given a scenario like this take a focus history for this patient who presents with a three-day history of chest pain or take a focus history for this patient who was referred on account of an hv 5.5 and then an mcv of say 120 here you are dealing with a macrocytic anemia you may also be given a scenario like take a focus history for this patient who presented with abdominal pain and then the nurses on the triage duty or in triage found out that she had an unrecordably high glucose and a urine dipstick had ketone urea of three pluses that is for internal medicine now for surgery you may be given a history station like Take a focus history for this patient who presented with or who presents with say a two-month history of an anterior neck swelling or who presented with a three-month history of a progressive jaundice. For pediatrics, you may be given a question like take a history for this patient who whose baby had maybe yellowing of the sclera on day three of life. Obstetrics and gynecology would give you um, a clinical scenario like Take a focus history for this patient who came complaining of abnormal vaginal bleeding. And so you have a history station for these clinical sub-disciplines. Remember, you have seven minutes to take a focus history and then three minutes to answer relevant questions which will be asked by your examiners. Very good. And so please do not forget, by the way, if you like this video, kindly like and share this video and then subscribe to our channel. Very important. Thing to do is to hit the notification bell so that when we upload simplified videos like this you'll be notified and then join the community to help you strategize for your exam now we've done the history taking as I mean a station for the man or ski station now we have another aspect of the man or station that is a physical examination station and just like the history station it spans across the various clinical sub disciplines and so for internal medicine you can have physical examination stations like a general examination station a cardiovascular examination station a gastrointestinal examination station respiratory examination station 
neurological examination station. Now, the neurological examination station can be, um, I mean, subdivided. You can have a facial nerve examination station. You can have a neuro exam station where you are asked to perform um, a neurological examination of the patient's lower limbs. You can have a station where you are asked to perform a motor examination. It means that examine the motor system. It means you are doing both for the upper limb and then the lower limb. You can have a neuro exam station where you are asked to examine the gait of a patient. And then normally in these kind of um, instructions, for example, examine the gait of a patient, you are going to talk about cerebellar diseases or Parkinson's disease. Remember that the physical examinations can be performed on a simulated patient. It means that the patient hasn't got any abnormal findings. Or it can be performed on a real patient. The patient has actually abnormal findings you may pick up. And then a patient or um, the examination can be performed on a mannequin. And so some of these examinations, it depends. You may perform it on um, a real patient, a simulated patient or a, a, a mannequin. Then you move to surgery. What are the various things you can be asked to do in surgery as far as physical examination station is concerned? And so for surgery, traditionally we have five short cases. Traditionally, you may be asked to examine the breast. So a breast lump, you may be asked to examine um, a hernia. So that's a hernia examination. You may be asked to examine an anterior neck swelling, that is a thyroid swelling, so a goiter. You may be asked to examine an ulcer, and you may be a, um, asked to examine a superficial swelling. So the traditional stations in surgery, in the surgery discipline, is ulcer examination, hernia examination, um, breast examination, superficial swelling examination, and then thyroid swelling examination. So we've done internal medicine, we've done surgery. Now the next thing is obstetrics and gynecology. So for obstetrics and gynecology, you may be asked to perform an examination of the gravid uterus. So that would be in a pregnant woman, examine the gravid uterus and then questions will follow. Remember that I should have mentioned earlier when I was talking about internal medicine and then surgery. Here too, you have seven minutes to examine your patients and then three minutes to answer questions which will be asked to your examiners and remember that they are two in the room. Now, for obstetrics and gynecology, back to obstetrics and gynecology, apart from being asked to examine the gravid uterus, you may be asked to perform an abdominal examination where usually you are supposed to pick a gynecological mass, it's either a uterine fibroid or an, an ovarian mass of a sort and then the questions will follow. Sometimes you may be asked to perform a pelvic examination or a speculum examination on the mannequin. It will never be a real life patient. Whenever that question comes that perform a speculum or a pelvic examination, it is always on the mannequin. And so you need to um, master that as well. In case I have not showed you what a mannequin looks like. A mannequin is like, I mean, you know what a mannequin looks like, right? Good. I don't know how to describe it. But let's go to pediatrics. Pediatrics may give you um, an examination station. It's similar to internal medicine. You may be asked to perform um, a cardiovascular exam on a child, a respiratory exam on a child, a general examination on a child. Sometimes a general examination seeks to find features of severe acute malnutrition. You may be asked to perform a gastrointestinal examination on a child. And so this is what goes on in the physical examination station. Yes, and so history station, physical examination station. What is the next station in the man or ski exam? The diagnostic station. And so the diagnostic station again would span across the various sub-disciplines of the medical practice. And so the diagnostic stations can be lab investigations, can be radiological investigations, okay? And so when we come to internal medicine, you may be given a full blood count picture to interpret. You may be given um, a biochemical lab report to interpret, maybe the biochemistry, how Cushing's um, syndrome labs would look like, how syndrome of inappropriate ADA secretion would look like. You may be given the hepatitis B profile to interpret. You may be given the CSF analysis report to interpret. You may be given primary aldosteronism report to interpret. So the lab investigations, are there are myriads of them. You may be given, radiologically, you may be given maybe a chest x-ray, a patient with consolidation pneumonia to interpret and answer questions on them. You may be given um, um, a head CT 
to interpret. You may be given again a chest x-ray, this time a pleural effusion to interpret. You may be given an ECG to look at it and then interpret. The difference is that unlike the OSCE stations for um, the history station and then the physical examination, which are 10 minutes, most likely for the um, for the diagnostic station, you would have five minutes for that. Surgery, you may be given again liver function test, um, X-ray, plain radiograph of the abdomen. It may show you intestinal obstruction. Or you may be given a plain erect chest x-ray where you see air under a diaphragm which shows you that there is a perforated hollow viscous maybe a typhoid ileal perforation or a peptic ulcer perforation a duodenal ulcer which has perforated the same goes for pediatrics you may be given a um, full blood count to interpret ion studies to interpret chest x-ray to interpret you may be given a whole lot to interpret Obstetrics and gynecology, you may be given an ultrasound scan maybe of um, a woman with a polycystic ovarian syndrome, so the string of pearls appearance to interpret. You may be given also um, a full blood count to interpret. You may be given, um, again I come back to the snowstorm appearance of the molar pregnancy I, I, I spoke about, okay, to interpret. You may be shown a picture of a hysterosalpingography. That is a picture of hysterosalpingography. Look at it. So it is a fluoroscopic um, um, investigation that is done for patients who are infertile, so to say. So um, we, we, we push a dye in there and then most of the times the dye will not spill through the fallopian tubes and that will show that probably there, is, there are blocked ovarian tubes because of a past um, history of a pelvic inflammatory disease. So that is how the diagnostic station is. So we have a history station, a physical examination station, and a diagnostic station. All have two examiners present. The difference is that the history station and then the physical examination station have 10 minutes, while the diagnostic station typically has five minutes. Exactly. And so a recap, history station, physical examination station, and then diagnostic station. Now these three stations seem to be constant. They seem to be constant in i mean featuring in your man or station now the fourth or station may vary it could be a viva station it could be a counseling station or it could be a procedure station and so let's take them one after the other and remember it may span through the four sub disciplines of the medical practice and so procedure station for internal medicine you may be asked to pass an ng tube on a mannequin you may be asked to pass a urethral catheter on a mannequin you may be asked to do a thoracosynthesis on a mannequin you may be asked to perform a urine dipstick so here they mix a, a, a solution of um, sugar and then ketones and then you perform the urine dipstick it picks up ketone urea and then glycosuria can you guess the discussion i mean where the discussion is going to to DKA, you are going to discuss this DKA, isn't it? So you have that. For surgery, procedure station, you may be asked again to pass an NG tube, pass a urethral catheter. For obstetrics and gynecology, you may be asked to perform a speculum exam. You may be asked to take an endocervical swab for culture and sensitivity. You may be asked to do a pelvic exam, that is a procedure station. For pediatrics, you may be asked to pass an IV line, you may be asked to take some samples. Let me come back to medicine. Medicine, sometimes the procedure would be to write a prescription. So how as a doctor would you write a prescription? Remember you have a prescription form which has a column where you write the name of the drug, then the route or route of administration, either IV, oral or suppository, then the dose, maybe 500 milligrams, and then the dosing, maybe two times daily, and then maybe the number of days, that is time seven. So that is how to write a prescription. So the procedure in internal medicine may also feature how to correctly write a prescription as a medical doctor. Then, apart from procedure, remember I said, if you don't, have, if you don't get a procedure station, you may get a counseling station. A counseling station is very, very, very common among the pediatric group. Maybe you have a, 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 a child who has been diagnosed with encephalitis, has been diagnosed with meningitis. Cancel the child's parents on the diagnosis you've made. So that's an educational session. So you'd have to do that. Sometimes it will be breaking bad news. Maybe someone's baby is dead. 
cancel the mother that the baby has passed on so a simulated patient will sit in front of you and you are supposed to break the bad news apart from being a procedure station and being a viva station it may be a um um I mean, it may be so a procedure station and then a counseling station. Sorry, I wanted to say it may be a viva station. So the viva station, you are familiar with viva station, isn't it? Questions can come all through. It can be a straightforward question, or it can be whatever the examiner likes. He would just query you on that. So we have discussed that for the clinical disciplines, right? And then community health. What can happen? Community health, they can just usually it's a viva station. There is no um, examination station in community health. A viva station. Maybe, hello, how are you doing? I like your shirt. Your shirt is very nice. Red. What is the importance of colors in community health? It can come like that. Hello, how are you doing? Can you tell me about the immunization schedule in Ghana? So it would be a conversation like that. Now, friends, as I mean, Throughout my presentation, it looks as though throughout the exam, you are going to move from station to station and there is no rest. No, that is not the case. We have two rest stations. A rest station is a station where you go and then you sit down without being asked anything. You don't do anything. So there are two rest stations in between the man or the So please do not worry. It is not like you are going to work like a, a horse or a donkey. I mean, imagine, the exam is going to last quite some time. So you are not going to move from, jump from one station to another. You go to one station, you are tired, and you are going to blame your inability to perform competently because you are exhausted. No, it's not going to be like that. That is never going to happen. You are going to have a very good rest, two rest stations, 10 minutes. So you have 20 minutes of rest, and then you continue your journey. All right, friends. And so all too soon, we are at the end of today's presentation now i want to make some statements it is very doable although the exam structure seems to have been made cumbersome it is very doable it is very passable if that is a word to use now it is common knowledge that one of the strategies to pass or one of the strategies used to pass your exam is knowing the structure of your exam that is why I have taken my time to go through the various aspects of the new GMDC exam structure with references based on my personal experience as a student in the University of Ghana Medical School and also based on the document that was brought out by the GMDC and based on the interview or yes, the interview I had with some students or some candidates who wrote the just ended June exam question. And so I want to end finally by quoting my chemistry teacher, a very astute mentor of mine in Accra Academy, while I was a student in Accra Academy. He told me that, or he told the class, not I specifically, but he told the class that when it comes to exam, as far as any exam is concerned, an intelligent person or an intelligent student is one whose questions were asked during exam, not the one who read books from cover to cover. The primary goal of writing an exam is to pass your exam. So what he meant was that when it comes to a definition of a smart student, a smart student is one who devises strategies to pass his exam, not the one who learns everything. And so thank you for watching. Again, I want to repeat that it is doable. Please do not forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet. See you in our next lecture and there will, there will be more simplified videos like this. Trust me. Bye and see you later.